Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. I want to talk on three things. Uh, oh, by the way, I'd like to appreciate everyone. Um, it's truly an honor and a blessing, a privilege to have us gather. I know that you come um, to be blessed, but your presence is a seed of the apostle. Your presence is a sign that God has sent us with a message, with an anointing, with a mandate, and we don't take for granted the sacrifices. I saw people in literally everywhere their feet can find expression. Um, some sitting even in the gutters and all around. It takes hunger and sacrifice. But I want to know that there is a God we have. In the name of Jesus. People have been in this town right from the beginning of the week preparing fasting families groups people have traveled from all over this nation risking their lives on food you will not be disappointed in the name of jesus there is authority to wipe your tears but very quickly i just want to talk on three things um as we teach the power of god is here but I want you to pay attention because it's important to receive a word that will change you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters, but he could not do anything until God said. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 says, The Spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. So, as, as I share with us, the Holy Spirit is going to be speaking. We are here for various reasons. There are people who are here for encounters of all sorts. People are here for healing miracles. People are here for breakthroughs. Others are just here to upgrade their passion, their pursuit. People are here for direction. Others are here for revelation. What is the root cause of my challenges and so on and so forth so it's important for us to pay attention to what god is doing the first thing the lord asked me to share with us is on our relationship with god please write it it matters to god um the extent of relationship we have with him john 15 will be very fast there's a lot to do tonight John 15. You know, one of, the, one of the very unfortunate things, especially with believers, is that um, many times we love to receive things from God on the platform of the prophetic, which is important, on the platform of someone else's faith, which is okay, but many times we frown at any process that leads us into developing intimacy. Listen, please, with the Holy Spirit. 
I don't know if I've taught it here, but the Holy Spirit began to teach me towards the end of last year that there are two dimensions to the operation of the power of God in a man's life. There is the dimension of God's power that is encapsulated in laws and principles. The very power of God programmed in spiritual laws and principles. So that the moment you fulfill the requirement of that principle at once, power is released for performance. You don't have to believe in the person of God. To get that kind of result. Hallelujah. You don't have to um, be a believer. The power of God. That's the dimension of power witches and wizards use. The Bible has no power its own. The Bible says once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power, not some, so I can manipulate spiritual laws and produce a result for you. Although I may not be, for instance, a child of God. The laws will work. But it's called witchcraft. Taught us because for it of God, that process must be initiated and sustained by the Holy Spirit. So even if the result is correct, but the spiritual agency that initiated it is not of God. It still leads to error and witchcraft. Are we together? But there is a higher dimension of spiritual power. It's called the reward of intimacy. Hmm. There is a higher dimension of spiritual power. As important as mysteries and principles are, I'll be talking a bit on it. You must grow past that realm. And then you get to a point where you are in so much of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. There are certain levels of spiritual power and authority that is hidden in him. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Hallelujah. Intimacy. God is not a magician. He's only a native doctor who does not care whether you know his name or not. Once you come into the shrine, he says, what's your problem? He doesn't care whether you know him. The relationship is not the issue. And you say, Baba, I want to kill somebody. And he says, okay, bring a fowl, bring, a, bring goat, add coconut, add whatever. And then he says, go, it's done. You don't even know the person. In fact, you may not even know how he looks because he's not interested in relationship. But when you come to God, God shifts your hand and says, let me have your heart first. You came with your hand. But God says, leave your hand. My son, give me your heart. Especially for those who are looking for anointing and power, there is a desperation for power. Whenever you see God doing great things through a man, it's usually shocking. Because you look at the man and you're like, where, is, where are these miracles coming from? <laughs> Let me tell you, if people look at your life and they are not surprised, it's a sign that the Holy Spirit is not exalted in your life. Everything about your life should be such a shock and a mystery that people look at koinonia, for instance, and say, what is this? It's the signature of God. You can see where man's effort ended and you know from here there is a mystery. Hallelujah. This ministry is a mystery because of the hand of God. He says, if I by the finger of God, the finger of God, but brothers and sisters, what you see is a product of relationship. You see, relationship will give you what your manipulation in prayer may not be able to give you. The Bible even says it takes the Holy Spirit for us to pray well. That God is saying, by my standard, you don't even know how to receive from me. Friendship. 
those who are pastors here of ministries inside and outside please pay attention more than power more than crowd believe me if you want the signature of the spirit upon your life focus on a relationship with god we don't like this that's why the dimension of the operation of god in our lives is limited if I begin to prophesy now and begin to speak and miracles begin to happen, many of us just loosen up and you say, now koinonia is on. No. God is not a herbalist. He's not a magician. What you see happening in this ministry is the same thing that happens in marriage. Are we together? When a man gets married to his wife, as a faithful bride, she becomes a partaker of his might, his authority, she bears his son name instantly. Instantly. His authority becomes her authority. Please listen. For as long as she remains a faithful bride, you may not like her. She may be a cleaner a day before, but marriage translated her. And the Bible tells us, listen, that the church, the ecclesia, is called the bride of Christ. I'm ever conscious of this fact. And the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives. Love your wives unto death. And so, there is the love of God. I, I am so, this is my confidence. That he loves me. And he will back everything that represents himself in my life. The first message for us tonight is that it's time to really be serious about our relationship with God. God is not a herbalist. He's not a magician. There are people who can be praying and shouting, using Jesus as if he's a genie. You know how you use a charm. You just strike it and do certain things. Look at what Jesus did. Look at his relationship with the Father. When he came, he said, Father, thank you at the grave of Lazarus because I know you always hear me. In fact, he was even embarrassed for just saying thank you aloud because to him it sounded like he was communicating unbelief and he had to em explain himself and say no 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 father don't think i don't believe you i did it for their sake we know what we do in the secret do you have a testament in your life that is a reward of the secret place that when men look at you they know that there is a rich healthy current relationship with the holy spirit Hallelujah. John 15 verse 1. Let's read very quickly the first seven verses. I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Listen. Two. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. The word take away there is, a, is an incorrect rendition. It's not take away. It's the word prune. It doesn't mean I dump. Because this gives God an idea like if you don't produce, he dumps you know he doesn't dump people he prunes you and he says every branch that beareth fruit he purged that it may yes that's the correct translation and that it may bring forth more fruit verse three we'll read down to seven please now we are clean through the word which i have spoken to you for help us media you have to be a bit fast please abide in me this is jesus speaking He's teaching us the secret of relationship that will produce a fearful dimension of result in your life. He says, abide in me and I in you. Right? We call this in theology the doctrine of interpenetration. The mystery that makes two entities become one. He that abided in me and I in him, what will be the result? Read on, read on. It's there. What will be the result? He says, no, 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 please give us verse 3 again. Verse 3, please go back. Okay, verse 4. Have I missed something? Verse 5. Thank you. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same does what? 
You see the secret. That's what we want. Another name is results. You want results in your life. He teaches you the secret. He says, I am the vine. Don't be confused. You are one with me, but you are not the vine. You are one with me as the branch. Don't just say, I'm one with Christ. As what? As the branch. Ever dependent on the vine. It says, he that abides in me. If Joshua Selman abides in me, and I abide in him, he said, the same will bring forth much fruit. And then it tells us the secret of dramatic results. For without me, for without me, the word without means outside of me, excluding me in the equation, you can do nothing. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. Verse 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, it says you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Results on the strength of relationship. And so you say, Father, bless your people. Hallelujah. And then you begin to see testimonies and results on the strength of relationship. Please, listen. Listen. God must be the most important person in your life. Above miracles. Above healing. Above business. Above career pursuits. Please listen. Sometimes we get busy trying to do things that we forget that our success in life is a derivative of our relationship. There is nothing in this life, believe me, that is worthy enough to steal away the value, the priority, the position of the Holy Spirit in my life. See what is made out of my life. Only a fool will truly know God and leave him alone to run and live his life his own way. He will give you what money cannot buy. He will do unbelievable, unimaginable things in your life. Intimacy. I've hammered this for years. And I'm saying it again. This is the first message. Pastor, if you want the anointing in your life, you want results in your ministry, it's not just by printing banners and marching around town and disturbing people with all kinds of things. There is a place for that. But your greatest publicity is the secret place. When you establish a track record, brothers and sisters, Look, God spoke about Jesus Christ. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he commanded creation to hear him. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It must be your passion. This is koinonia. So God is calling you. I know you want to be healed, but much more than healing. I know you want to be delivered, but much more than deliverance. I know you want breakthrough. You are tired. You want God to visit the foundation of your problem. But more than that, please hear me when I tell you this. It's a sustainable key to grace. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul? To the song of all songs, his presence, the key to knowledge. Dance we be your lover of my soul. To the song of all songs. Just sing it two more times as an expression of your love to God.
your voice and pray in one minute and say lord in this place tonight let there be grace for me to fall in love with you above and beyond everything please lift your voice and pray inside and outside pray grace to love you grace that you become a priority in my life Are you praying, Koinonia? Inside and outside, please make sure you are praying. Oh, yes, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. With all my heart, plant a fire in me. In this miracle service, oh God, more than ministry, more than business, more than academics, more than career pursuit more than marriage more than parenting bring me to a point where nothing in life can take your place blessing or no blessing prosperity or no prosperity healing or no healing deliverance i love your presence I love you. If ye are in me and my word abides in you, you will produce results. Be imagination. Bring us to that place, oh God. Please sit down. There are certain people, this is all you need tonight. Just this key to fall in love with you. Hallelujah. Relationship. Many times after the service, you see people queuing up to see me. And I have some of our children here. They don't join the queue. It's called the privilege and the blessings of relationship. Hallelujah. While the rest are seeing me officially, some of these children can just walk up to me and hug me. And as far as they are concerned, anybody in the queue, sorry about that, but this is relationship. Are we together now? Oh, relationship will give you more. Points you didn't pray for. You will see God answering it. That's the realm where the Bible says as they are still thinking while he's still in the realm of imagination. When they threw a man who was in a healthy relationship with God. You know that's what, that was the bill that was passed by the Senate in Babylon to make sure Daniel cuts away his relationship with God. And Daniel said, no, I can do any other thing but not this. When they threw him in the den, the king could not sleep. See, the same way if you touch a man's wife, even if it's by mistake, you can insult her from a distance, that's all right. But you get physical. The husband changes. The Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. You want to see an angry man do something to his wife or somebody he loves, his sister or someone. That's what happens. Love alone will give you a level of immunity above the immunity of an earthly ambassador believe me when i tell you this the prophet knew this and that was why when they came to capture him he said they that are with us for us are greater there is an immunity that you can have i pray that god will bring us to that place of fellowship there is that place where sickness cannot come near you there is that place where no oppression of darkness please believe me you will not spend your time binding and casting you will spend your time interacting there is an immunity that comes from that place and your life becomes an unending wonder a subject of discussion with no end 
because there is a mystery that surrounds it the mystery is him the mystery is him when when shade was collecting the tithes and offering and she said um, she was giving an example of a woman and she wanted to look for somebody i was hoping she won't call my name you clean my feet you don't get anything believe me there's, there's there's nothing on my you only clean a dirty um feet but if you can clean his feet change your life relationship hallelujah number two please pay attention the second thing the lord put in my heart to share with us is that life is a code life is a code life is a code c-o-d-e thank you life is a code there was so much noise i don't know where that was coming from life is a code And it takes revelation to unlock the codes and the mysteries of life. Brothers and sisters, as haphazard as life looks, there is a spiritual rhythm that is responsible for manifestation of results. Please hear me. I call them mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. Life is a code. It takes knowledge and understanding to unravel it. Nothing just happens. You don't just grow. You don't just experience favor. You don't just prosper. You don't just fall sick. You don't just stay healthy. You don't just live long. And you don't just die. Life is governed by laws. Please listen life is governed by mysteries bishop oyedeko calls them kingdom secrets the bible says let, let's look at a few scriptures while i was meditating on this i'm telling you it, it blew my mind media you help us give us job 29 verse 4 job 29 verse 4 then we'll go to chapter 1 verse 3 job 29 verse 4 and then chapter 1 verse 3 hear what job said the richest man in the east he says as i was in the days of my youth when what when the secrets of god was upon my tabernacle he was giving us the explanation this was a defense a justification for his being the greatest man in influence and he said let me tell you it's not because my name is job there was a mystery he said i started doing business with god right from my youth he says when the secrets of god everybody say the secrets of god the secrets of god were upon my tabernacle what did that produce in his life chapter 1 verse 3 same job the bible says his substance this was a man who had access to divine secrets the mysteries of the kingdom listen he says his substance was also seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household he says so that this man was what the greatest of all men in the east and he tells us the secret he said don't just envy my influence what you see life is a mirror if you try to change your physical environment it's as foolish as looking at the mirror and trying to choke your hand through it to alter it life only reflects something happening in the spirit the greatest man in the east gives us the secret and he says the secret of the lord I traded secrets, divine secrets. There was an exchange between the Holy Spirit and me. Daniel chapter 2. Let's see what Daniel says. Daniel chapter 2 verse 
19 and then 46 daniel chapter 2 verse 19 is god blessing you already life is not haphazard daniel chapter 2 verse 19 listen this was when the king had a dream and he was angry because all his wise men and lieutenants could not interpret it and he said look we're going to kill everybody and then daniel said no let the king not be hasty in this give us time and daniel knew the power of his secret place and the bible says then ah, yeah, 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 yeah. then the secret was what revealed brothers and sisters when a particular kingdom secret is revealed you hold the keys and you will do wonders with it there's no there's, there's no way no way you can claim you are holding on to a key in the kingdom and with time there is no evidence now it says then the secret was revealed unto daniel in a night vision and then daniel blessed the god of heaven 46 46 it says listen my goodness a man holds a secret of the kingdom and begins to shock the entire Babylonian empire to a point that this happened then the king Nebuchadnezzar did what he fell upon his face and worship who God secrets make a man like a God upon the earth a king removes his crown and says what is this Daniel he says he worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders to him look at verse 28 of the same verse 28 hear what daniel said please let's read together he was now giving us the key one to read but there is a god in heaven that does what and makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days brothers and sisters the god we serve is a god that reveals secrets he can call you and say come let me show you a secret secret do you know them do you know the mystery what you see in this ministry by the grace of god this little that god is doing it's a product of mysteries. Don't you ever think it's a mistake. It can be reproduced anywhere, any day, any time. Because it's a secret. It says there is a God in heaven. Everybody say there is a God in heaven. That will reveal secrets for me today. Yeah. There is a secret when you handle the story of your family will change tonight. Just one secret. Please believe me. There is a secret God can show you by prophecy tonight and tell you, look, look, this confusion, you are, you are amiss. This is what is wrong. This is the correction. There is a secret. That delay has a mystery that sustains it. Are we together? That bad luck has a mystery that sustains it. Don't just say people don't like me. Don't you know there is something that makes them not to like you? The same way somebody can turn and look at Benga and say, Benga, God just led me. I don't know why, but take 100,000. No, nobody just acts anyhow. They think they are acting out of compassion, but there is an influence in the spirit. There is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. I must burn this revelation in our hearts. I want us to really have it. Psalm 25 verse 14. It says the secret of the Lord is with who? Them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is not with believers. It's not with churchgoers. Not pastors. Not apostles. Not prophets. Those who revere him. Those who respect him. He will call you and say, come, let me show you something. Let me show you what makes ministry work. Let me show you something that can take your life. Let me show you something that can bring you promotion in your office. 
there is something the bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know and part of the blessings of the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry is access to the mysteries of a dispensation Ephesians chapter 3 please give us chapter verse 1 to 3 Ephesians chapter 3 this is an apostolic ministry this is a prophetic ministry you must understand the spiritual implication this is what Paul is saying listen he says for this cause do you know that the mysteries of the kingdom have not um it's not yet it's not exhausted the revelation what we know in church today is not all there is god is still opening more doors and it takes the apostolic ministry to be able to receive and communicate this dispensational secret current mysteries three verse one for this cause i paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. Verse 3. Read please. One to read. How that by revelation he made known unto me. What? The mystery. He made known unto me. He showed me by revelation. As I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. Whereby. Listen. When ye read. Ye may understand my knowledge. In the mystery of Christ. Next verse. Shocking. Listen. Which in other ages. Ah, yeah, 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 was not made known to the sons of men. Stop. Listen. There are mysteries that have been uncovered. In, in today's world. That have not yet been people did not access it before not that it was not there but that mystery was not meant for that dispensation and the bible says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto who his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit it didn't say revealed to believers please listen this is not human worship it didn't say reveal to believers the current present truth the operation of the holy spirit administratively is communicated in the body by the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic so there are mysteries that god is helping us One of the things I pray that will come upon us tonight is a mantle of revelation. Not just miracles, but that you hold on to something. The moment you enter your office, you know what to do to silence wicked men. The moment you step in, you know what to do to move to the next dimension. The Bible says for Jesus himself knew what to do. Scripture says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Can we pray in one minute and say, Lord, there is something I need to know to rise to the next level. Please show me. Pray. There is something I need to know. My God, I pray that you show me. Why does everybody hate me? Could it be that there is a mystery that I need to know? The Bible says, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. Please pray. Lord, why am I just failing, failing in class? What is the mystery that will end my captivity? Why an endless circle of poverty? There is a key. Hand it to me tonight, oh God. Please hand it to me. Why do I just fall sick? Why is my church not growing? Why is my heart just dividing? 
there is a mystery i humble myself tonight why is the anointing scarce in my life why have i not access influence in the spirit show me the mystery Are you praying? Open my eyes. This is my year of multiplied grace and influence. It's my year. I place a demand. It's a right because of truth. Right properly. Just said up in the day of my youth when the secrets of the Lord secrets hear me koinonia we do business in this kingdom with secrets there are secrets we remain on the strength of mysteries pray is part of the meeting you're opening up your spirit Lord, I'm tired of cycles of failure. What's my family? There is a mystery that really bring deliverance. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. And only those who seek find. They are light to those who find them and health to their flesh. Number three. The third thing the Lord asked me to share with us tonight, very powerful, is found in John chapter 5. Please give us John chapter 5. We'll read verse 1 to 9. The Lord wants to reveal a dimension of himself tonight as the helper. Listen. Listen. The Bible calls God a Beniza. You know what that means? The helper of men. When God comes in to help you in life, you must succeed. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We're reading down to verse 9. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, Bethesda having five porches. Right? Verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of... Look at the kind of people there. Successful people don't have any business with that environment. It's an environment that connoted weakness. It says, impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Please pay attention. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And then whosoever, excuse me, whosoever then um, first, then first after troubling the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Can you imagine that kind of frustration? One person per year. Just like Nigeria says, you should wait until somebody retires or dies. Then they say there's vacancy. You now come. One person per year was a horrifying situation. Then the Bible says there was a certain man. No name. There was a certain. Which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. Do you agree with me? After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. At 38 years, no child is a concern. At 38 years, you cannot at least move into your house. It's a concern. 
at 38 years there's nothing meaningful you are doing is a concern the bible says this man had been dead 38 years when jesus saw him lie now listen god is about to speak to you and knew that he had been there for how long for a the first revelation is that he knows you have been in that situation for a long time he knows and then the bible says he said unto him will thou be made whole verse 7 this is what many of us are saying tonight the impotent man answered sir i have no man i have no helper i would have gotten the job but i have no helper i would have stepped into another level in ministry but i have no helper he says i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool and tonight god wants to be a helper he walked to him and the man said i have no helper but he said i will help you you don't need the pool rise up he can use another route the formula had always been fall inside the water but he said let's ignore the water i am here rise up the formula has been be blessed after 20 years but god is saying i can follow another route with you such that in one year i can do something in your life that will surprise you he said i have no man and the lord said reveal to my people i will manifest as a helper when god helps a man you will be surprised the bible says uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped marvelously helped part of the ministries of the holy spirit is as a helper he comes in to help you that's what grace is all about that where your effort stops and you say lord if it's based on my qualification Oh, I read whatever it is. And God says, I am here. I can take you to another level. Oh God, I'm here. I've been barren. They said, I don't even have a womb. And he says, I am here to help you. Who is God speaking to tonight? You really need help. Only an arrogant person will deny the need for help. I have been helped by people in my life. And I saw how easy my life became when they helped me. Are we together now? Watch this. Benga, come. I'm trying to lift this. And my hand is, I can't lift it. And then a helper comes. And sometimes he can even volunteer to carry everything. And it makes my life easy. The help of God can make a man's life easy. Please, let me preach to you for one minute. I have a responsibility over this house to tell you this and I must say it. Disabuse your mind from this satanic proposal coming from the media that Nigeria is in trouble. Economy, everybody shouting dollar. I'd like you to shout it, count me out. Say it. Shout it one more time. Listen, we are not irresponsible citizens. Don't get me wrong. We sympathize with what is happening in the nation. But if you dare let Satan speak to you, he will destabilize your creativity and crumble your life. People who have been irresponsible since before dollar have found a shield to explain their irresponsibility. Everybody says dollar is rising. Is it not in your Bible when men say, Are we together now? He says, you will say there is a lifting up. This is not the first time the economy of the world is going into trouble. The Bible says in the days of Joseph, it said money failed. Money failed. But there was a secret that was revealed to Joseph. There is what you hold on to that this year can be the most prosperous year in your life. Listen. Listen. God is looking for every opportunity to make a statement. Afford him your life. A Christian is not one who has just received Jesus into his life. 
a christian listen is one who operates by the principles of the word of god our economy is different and by economy i don't just mean finances your health whatever there's lassa fever there's what again huh there's zika virus there's which one again they are, they are there is the one you know you are mentioning what of the ones that are arrows that fly by day have they told you on tv the bible listen listen psalm 90 don't turn there our time is gone psalm 91 said thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence right there are diseases you breathe them all around. It takes a superior revelation to keep you. I reject everything whose price has been paid on the cross. I will not pay another price again. Are we together? You must understand the implication of your oneness with Christ. So he wants to be your helper. Can you hand over your life and say, God, help me. Truly, I've tried by myself. If you don't help me, I will never get this admission. If you don't help me, I will never graduate. If you don't help me, my certificate will remain a piece of paper. I will keep mocking myself with my accolades. Listen, if no one has told you, let me tell you again, our world is a cruel and a wicked world. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to trouble anyone. You just need to be alive. That's the condition to be a potential victim. When the Lord told me this, I said, Lord, I first, I receive for myself. I receive for myself. He is my helper. When God comes in to help you, he can round off what has taken you 10 years 10 years of captivity let me tell you something it doesn't take time when jesus is there it doesn't take time you'll be watching the growth this is how it will live and you're saying where is it it's gone who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne you know why I raised that song? If you think there are many gods, I know that we claim we are not idols, but I will show you now that many of us have been practicing idolatry. You know why many people never believe God? We still have options. Your uncle still said, okay, let's just see what happens at the end of the month. So while you are saying, Lord, I trust you, what you mean is, Lord, I trust you through my uncle. Are we together now? Lord, I trust you through that, that CEO. I met him and he said uh, he will consider my promotion. Lord, I trust you through my job. God says he will bless you and he said, I know my salary is on his way coming. Lord, I trust you and you say, I know I, there's, there's that consultant surgeon. He's coming in next week from India. And God is just arranging it such that he's coinciding with my need. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. Every ocean rolls to the Lord our Lord. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the elders and the saints Sing praise I believe God though I'm a man of faith I believe God he says, I know whom I have believed. 
I've seen God help people even in this place. In this place. Brothers and sisters, there is a mystery of lifting. God can take a man. You see somebody today and God can lift that person. It, it, they looked at Saul and said, when did, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he's already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men. That you are about to die after one month. And after koinonia, you are not only alive, you are carrying the healing anointing. Who is this God that can bring speed to a man? I'm not motivating you. I know him. There is a mighty God who can wipe the tears of people. Let me tell you, this night, before we pray, just take away your mind from anything and everybody. Don't come to God with your calculation and say, Lord, my prayer request, I wrote my uncle, he must answer me. Leave that one. Let God choose. If God wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough, let him give it to you. You've not read that God used a bed to bring bread for a man. Do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen. Don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God, nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, avenge me my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. And she kept pestering him. When you place a demand with your faith, there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. You can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies. But please tonight, wherever you are, inside and outside, don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight. Are we together? God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper. Bless you, my dear. As a helper. As a helper. This ministry has been helped by the Lord. Greatly helped by the Lord. I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony. We don't have the opportunity to share one tenth. And by the way, I want to challenge you. When God blesses you, don't keep quiet. You return back to where you receive the miracle and let the people of God know. That this is what God has done. I shared the testimony last week. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. When Kaduna after a meeting. Just to have lunch briefly and then rush back. And I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too. And she's with a little son. Then I look at this woman and she was looking at me. She said are you Pastor Joshua? I said yes ma. And then she greeted me. And I said sorry do I know you? And she smiled. She said I'll tell you a little story. She said two years ago she came for counseling as wretched. It was like she had come to the end of her life. I share this to encourage you. Hallelujah. And um, she said everything was scattering. She was a single mom with a child. Supposedly no hope for marriage. Nothing was working. They were about to throw her out on her job. And I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department. She should not be afraid. And she said, man of God, that's exactly what happened. And she looked at me. And she said, can you imagine what has happened in my life? She just put her hand like this and I saw a ring. And she said, I just got married two months ago. And then she said, I should look outside. And there was a clean E-class. She said, who would believe that in two years I'll be the one owning this. My life has changed. Brothers and sisters, if you will believe, God can change your life. If you will argue, 
he will not argue with you he will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons please i want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say lord you must answer me whenever i call you you will answer me elijah called on you and you answered him moses called on you and you answered him that's why i know wherever i call you you will answer me seated here inside and outside in all of the overflows there are people with medical reports that if god does not visit them this night they are dying for sure i bring you a message of hope the helper is in the house there are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because the the situation is so scattered it doesn't have beginning and end they don't even know where the problem started from they know that they are in the middle of a situation but the helper when he comes he can make every crooked path straight there are people here trusting god for children there are people here trusting god for a turnaround breakthrough do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, please pray. yes lord hallelujah 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 one more prayer point the power of god is so strong in this place i'd like you to say lord visit the foundation of my problem and set me free please lift your voice and pray what you think may be the problem may not really be the problem hallelujah we're going to sing this song just seven times and then i'll begin to minister my goodness i tell you god will do extraordinary things in this place i will praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting i will praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting i will praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting i will praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting i will praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting i will praise him from everlasting Everlasting to everlasting, I will praise Him from everlasting, everlasting no, 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 no. to everlasting. I will praise Him from everlasting, everlasting to the voices. I will praise Him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle worker. From who will step into your life everlasting to everlasting i will praise him from everlasting everlasting 
One more time. Lord, we will praise you. From everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you. From everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting. Everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. It's time for you to rejoice. The Lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family. Because you love the Lord, but there is a lot of oppression in your life. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out by the authority of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. And God is removing something from your stomach too. I'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth. I command it to go now. Right now. Right now. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting. Hallelujah. Everlasting. Madam, check yourself. Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. Because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you, huh? Yes, sir. There's a movement. There's a movement. Because I'm seeing something. Later, they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are, you are even afraid of going to the hospital. The hospital. Yes, sir. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today, we cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Please, let's save time. Gabriel, you are at that row. You are at the back. That row, at the back. You are a gentleman at the back. That row there. Where is the person, please? Come out quickly. You are wearing something like brown. Brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Eh? because I'm seeing another woman your mother is here the Lord is saying I should speak to her light is living from you outside there is a woman outside she's your mother where is she is she here or at, not outside at, at the, is he at the edge of the wall or outside some who is that please is she here come mama God is wiping the tears of your family tonight Everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. you're welcome please stand up this woman has suffered i'm looking at this woman and i saw a load on your head 
that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone. Mama, can you hear me? Look at this woman crying. You see, some of you don't know why. God, this is not just showmanship. There are people here just seated close to you. If they tell you their stories, your own story will look like child's play. Because this woman has suffered. Mama, you are a good woman, but listen, listen. Where, where are, you? are you? Are you in Zaria here? Yes, sir. In Zaria, what do you do? I deserve something. I need to pray because I'm I'm seeing this is a cause. I'm a widow. I know. I'm going to pray for you. Do you know why I call this boy? They want to kill him. That's why I want to pray for him. They caught. He matter. They caught. This boy matter. They caught. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say on the ten. Eh? What court? He get problem. He matter. They court. If I don't pray for this boy as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you are, have a case in the court? Why would we call somebody? Like, don't don't be afraid, Mama, because this thing will even cause you problem. Um, young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a cause. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside. A woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie. But it's not like her tie. Same material. Her tie like a normal. This thing. This, this, it's, a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window. Please, I need to speak to her. If there is somebody like that. Let's have... A mother outside the Lord is showing me mama I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus for God to change your story I don't know what is in the court but in the name of Jesus we will change it how old are you you are 14 you will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus you believe that where are you from mama from Edo. you are from where Old Edo, from Okwela. where are you from you are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me. Because the same thing he's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying that spirit. Father, I lay my hands on our mommy. The back pain. Look at me, Mama. The back pain you have. It 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 will be healed now. Amen. Hold my hands. Amen. Look at what is happening to her. Mama, shout Jesus loud. Jesus! Father, hold my hands for your glory. Mama, look at me. Look at me. You see something like fire moving at your back right now. That pain is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Look at, look at you. Help her. Cover her. Please. It will never return to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman, Mama, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'll pray for you, but there is another woman I'm talking about. There is another Mama outside who needs to come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. You have a daughter. Yes. 
Yes. Where is she? She's outside. She's outside. Call her. Come. Daughter, where are you? Please come. Everlasting to What's her name? Shim. Shim. Please, Shim. you had your name rush and come in. Our time is gone. Who is this? I told her to have the one. No. The woman I'm talking about has her tie. Um, it's not the same as the material. It's not the same as the material she's wearing. I'm looking for a hair tie that looks close to it. Ladies, now, the normal scarf that you carry and tie. But I will pray for you. Anybody that has come out, I'll pray for you. I don't know why she's here, she is, but I'll pray for you. You are already out, I'll pray for you. Please, let's, let me just minister to those that are here. I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? daughter. Um, Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother. This is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? Oh, mine. I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying, I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Believe me. Who is this? Your what? Sister, but she have um, son and daughter. You have a daughter? She have a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a student. Where? ABU here. ABU here. Yes, I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to mama. And make sure you bless her with all your heart. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Right now in the name of Jesus. Bless you mama. Come. Come. Two of you. You love Jesus? Are you part of them? Come. You love Jesus? No, you are stubborn. Come. You need to be prayed for. Come. You don't love Jesus. You are, you are very stubborn. But Jesus loves you. You are a stubborn boy. You have bad friends. You don't listen. We have to pray for you. There is a spirit disturbing you. You need to be delivered. Let her go right now. Out! Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. She's mad. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out! You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit. They must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad like occult fly. This is occult. 
an occultic thing. It's not just madness. And you, if they don't pray, you don't listen, you are small, but God will help you, eh? Don't be angry. You have to leave your bad friends. You hear me? If not soon now, you start taking, uh, what's that thing, that cough syrup? Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Please. Don't be embarrassed. We're not, we're not here to embarrass people. You get what I'm saying? We're not here to embarrass people. I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm, I'm vibing in Sokoto. Eh? I'm staying with my elbow at the Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm vibing in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. You two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling you? Yes, you came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. Yeah. He's staying with your mom. Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You are a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing. Now, what took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? No, sir. I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. Because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam. On Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abi? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you. And you're already doing arranging. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. The Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't... Yes, Mama, Mama, call me. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do... There is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you. A business door. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina. I hear a name, Regina. Regina, Lord, in the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name, Regina. Regina. Please, who is that? Do we have anybody? Outside. Regina. You are outside. There's nobody. We just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a saloonist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this. And your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you, what do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated. I have to pray for you because you love God. Yes, sir. Mind 
is who is supposed to they've started your marriage planning please come my sister I, I don't mean to embarrass you you get what I'm saying is to speak over your life you do what category are you here for huh? Regina okay I'll pray for you who has sickle cell there's a sickler here now you are the one please indicate eh, sweetheart. come hold my hands look at me father please do a miracle for this lady you have changed several genotypes in this place change her genotype right now in the name of Jesus from SS to AA do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ my dear let me pray Please, um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please, be serious, eh? And pray, because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious. And you can do anything, especially men. So, please... You will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? You called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God saved you from heartache. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you. If you don't have the eyes of the spirit, you will be fighting God not knowing. Are we together now? I'm sorry to say, don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed. You see that guy? It was three of you. You are not the only one. You have been sensing that there's another lady. The other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you. That's why he, he quietly called out of fear and all of that. That he's, He may be a sincere person, but him and women, he's even a spirit. He needs help. Let me pray for you that God will bring the man he has destined. You're a very nice lady. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her. Father, send him to her life. The man... A, a responsible and God-fearing man in the name of Jesus Christ and for your shame may my God give you double in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let me just talk to two people and then we'll, madam please come that woman can I talk to you please clear the way for her madam please come please let's pray go ahead and pray pray in the spirit say father visit me Madam, please look at me. I have to pray for you. Something is tying your finances down completely. Yes, sir. That's the major reason why you came. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. You were asking the Lord to visit your finances. Yes, sir. Because everybody will see you now and think things are just working, but the truth is nothing is really working. Yes, sir. You need a serious miracle in that area. That's true, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Are you married? Yes, but now I'm out of Hold on. Don't worry. You just answer. You don't have to embarrass yourself because there is a spirit. Huh? This spirit brings bad luck on your life. People come to you and then in a few weeks or months, they will now fight you. This is still what happened in your marriage. It's true, sir. Because the man has gone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, is that true? Are you in your husband's house now? No, sir. You are not in your husband's house. The yes, Lord is bringing a miracle for you. Amen. What do you do? I'm a hairdresser. Your address, sir. Do you believe in tithing? Yes, sir. You tithe? No. Don't feel embarrassed. This is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place. Please believe it. It's not a gimmick by men of God. Is she your friend? Because I'm seeing light from you to her. You know her. Eh? Why have you not been talking to her about tithing? Even last week you discussed with her. 
no 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 don't feel bad madam please look at me tithing is not a gimmick by men of god believe me you understand what i'm saying is the access point the devil is using where is your husband the man now it's at home now I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. See, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome? Yes, sir. We soon need doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know. I don't know what causes it, but I know how it. Do Please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast this. Um, it's a congenital disorder, and the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. Then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all <laughs> I know. <laughs> Most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We are going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah god do a miracle in the name of jesus hold him am i holding him right jesus christ father by the blood of jesus do a miracle in this child we change this situation in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let there be a miracle in jesus name I'm seeing one more child though. Who is that? Please come. Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? Something is really fighting you. Huh? This is witchcraft. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you know my voice. In the name of Jesus, she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light. And you must let her go. I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree. That is, is refused from moving. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those dreams, those oppressions, I come against them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the baby. What's wrong with the baby? She has been coughing and stooling. Coughing and stooling. Baby, how are you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to you. No more coughing. In the name of Jesus Christ, perfection in your body. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. 
the power flows through this baby in Jesus name I hope the usher help out because I'm sensing this anointing even on her in the name of Jesus Christ baby we take away everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ look at me where is the man in your life Okay, I'll pray with you in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something that is serious, but I'll talk. I'll talk about it. Okay. The Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. There are 13 people here. There is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation. Please listen. 13 people here right now, inside and outside. I'm going to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, as I begin to pray, it's like fire. It will come upon you. Confusion, stagnation at least 13 people i see in the spirit please lift your hands don't say anything just lift your hands i'll do the praying let's just flow the way the holy spirit is praying. lord jesus i'm praying right now by the ministry of angels 13 people by the influence of the spirit i stand under this apostolic anointing and i pray right now wherever you are inside and outside right now as i pray that fire starts coming upon them right now right now bring them out 13 people 13 people by the power of the holy spirit i end it right now there are still people outside inside 13 people by the anointing of the holy spirit bring them out please right to the back right to the back right to the back right to the back i'm seeing fire it's like a spirit that would jump out of you right to the back inside outside i command that confusion outside the anointing the holy ghost is resting on people confusion all the overflows in the name of jesus confusion must come to an end right now delay lift your hands i tell you there will be a mighty baptism outside outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus when you shout it i see altars on fire are you ready now outside one two three bring them bring them fire is falling outside the bible says why men slept hear me there are things that tie the destinies of men jesus already paid the price that's why we are doing what we are doing the authority is that of jesus christ bring them in now listen listen my goodness you are going to lift your hands for your family i see the angels of the lord bringing deliverance for families listen at the count of three i tell you wherever you are i like you to shout jesus with all your heart some of you you are representing an altar of god for your family and the moment you do that in the name of jesus there will be a miracle one father for families let the soul of the spirit go from the north to the south east and the west of every family right now at the count of three one two three families families 
families the sword of judgment Pray, pray. Make sure you're praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now those outside, listen. I came out because your destiny must open up. Lift your hands. I came out to bring the atmosphere of God's presence. Hear me. There is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain. I'm going to, listen. I'm going to begin to walk around. My goodness, I see angels by my left and right. As I begin to move across this place, the fire of God will start falling. Right now, I stand under this apostolic office and I declare my hands. Right now, right now, right now. I command that right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire. Every spirit. Every devil from my left, my right, outside, outside, my left, my right, every devil right now, I stretch my hands, every spirit, go, 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 I command every spirit, right now, release them, release them, right now, release them, release them, release them. let Hallelujah. 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 Those of you here, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to shout Jesus just two times. And I see like a tornado. It's like the spirit will start moving right to the back. That's what the Lord is saying. I should shout. There are spirits, time men. It's your time to go now. Jesus. Get ready now. Get ready now. Jesus. Go, go, go out. Out right now. My left and my right. I release my spirit. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Those spirits. I command them to leave. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Out, 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 out. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I command right now, right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Every force tying you down. In the name of Jesus, it must release you right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all. That's why I came out. I'm going to all the overflows. Those of us here, you may be outside. But let me tell you something. God will step into your destiny. Please lift your hands. Because I'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end. I'm seeing chains. Lift your hands. I want you to shout Jesus just once at the count of three. And everybody under that influence must go right now. Please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them. Father, I chains of bondage. But you organize this meeting to recover destinies. Therefore, at the count of three, it will come like fire on some of you. One, two, three. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. 
let her go right now in the name of Jesus 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 the Lord is giving you a new song a new song the Lord is wiping your tears you on green lift your hands take it now receive right now by the power of the Holy Ghost Mama, the Lord is saying I should tell you he's wiping your tears. God is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying what you could not do in five years. You, Mama, in five years, he's making to happen for you in one year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15. Verse 47. Forty-seven. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And also is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 49. And as we have borne the image, oh hallelujah. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I'd like us to read verse 49. Read it with understanding. One to read. Please help us with the fun. The Bible says, as we have born, it begins to give us a contrast of inhabitants and beings in this earth. Right? When you read the preceding verses, it says there are different kinds of bodies. Please listen to me. The teaching tonight will bless you. He said there are some bodies that are terrestrial. There are some bodies that are celestial. And all of them are within this territory. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says in the same way, since we have borne the image of the earthly, there is a system in God that can help us manifest experientially the image of the heavenly. And this is what I'm going to be dealing with very briefly tonight. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. Help us, O oh Lord. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10 as we have borne the image of the earthly so we will bear the image of the heavenly verse 10 one to read if you're there thy kingdom come thy will be done where? not on earth not on earth thy will be done in earth in the same way your will has been done in heaven in heaven your will has been done and that's why the fullness of your kingdom find expression but lord let your kingdom find expression in the earth in the same degree in the same dimension and in the same similitude hallelujah Tonight, I want to share with us something that has helped my life through the years and is still helping my life. This, for me, is one of the keys to carrying very heavy weights of the glory, the life, the power, the beauty of the kingdom upon your life. If you will pay attention to what I'm about to teach you in these few minutes, 
and you believe it and you walk in that light then you will find out that first Corinthians 15 from verse 49 will become your testimony that here and now you will be a manifestation of a reality that is not obtained in this realm you will walk as though a God upon the earth hallelujah Jesus began to talk and he said when you pray let this be part of the content of your prayer our father who resides in the heavens and he says we hallow you revere him come to him with the spirit of reverence and worship and after that let the consummation of your prayer let the core of your prayer be your kingdom come. your influence the atmosphere of heaven the same principle that makes heaven heaven lord let it find expression in the earth not just on the ground but in the earth these mortal bodies of clay let the heavenly let that which has made celestial beings find its way to the earth realm hallelujah and find its way upon the inhabitants of the earth that way your will will be done. Your kingdom will come. Your glory will be revealed. Write this word down please. Transformation. Transformation. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Liberty. Not lawlessness, freedom, space. And he said, we all, wherever that place is, certain things happen there. And one of it is that we all, with open face, there is an unveiling. He says, we behold him as though looking at ourselves in a mirror. And then we begin to experience transformation. So we are the image of the earthly. But as we behold the heavenly, there is a transformation that begins to happen. And we begin to look like the heavenly. It says we are changed from glory. One dimension of glory to another. And the name given to that process is transformation. Transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ you can expound on it transformation is the process of alignment and conformity the process that process of alignment that process of conformity that makes a man become a manifestation and an expression of the heavenly that makes any man become an expression of Jesus the very Christ upon the earth transformation is the name given to the spiritual process the spiritual technology the system by which the earthly becomes the heavenly the system by which the weak become strong the system by which the canal becomes spiritual. It's called transformation. The desire of God. Listen. The desire of God. Is that the fullness of his glory. His glory means his nature, his essence. The fullness of his power. The fullness of his kingdom, his influence. The fullness of his culture, his way of life, invade the earth and find expression in the earth exactly the way it finds expression in heaven. That is the heart cry of the Father. That the fullness of his culture, the fullness of his principles, 
his glory, his power, his wisdom find expression in the earth as it is in the heavens. God is not satisfied just with the beauty and the, the excellence of heaven. He wants to birth that same experience. That was the idea behind the formation of Eden. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his character. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his excellence. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of him. That's why he gave his exact dominion to man. Not an inferior type. His very dominion gave it to man. And it still is his desire that his fullness will find expression. If that happens in the earth, then we will see the harvest of souls. Then we will see transformation and revival across individuals and territories. Then we will see the systems and the kingdoms of this world becoming experientially the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Then the ultimate plan of God will be fulfilled. That all things be headed up in Christ even as he submits to the Father. And so the strategy is that Jesus submits to the Father. And then the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit like a faithful bride submits to the authority of Jesus. And then through dominion and a demonstration of the reality of the kingdom, the church, the battle acts, will bring creation under its feet. And then all things according to Colossians becomes headed up in Christ and he becomes the fullness of all things. This is the eternal plan of God. But for that to happen, his kingdom must come. Listen, please, get what I'm saying. His kingdom, his influence, his glory. When that happens, then we will see a reality that is foreign to the earth finding expression because there are vessels that become containers of that reality. It is at that point we will see the eyes of the blind open by a technology that medicine cannot explain. It is at that point we will see men walk like gods upon the earth. Right? When they saw the apostles, they called them Zeus and Hermes. Greek gods. Because they operated laws that defied what man had known. And the heart cry of the father is that his kingdom, the fullness of his influence, the fullness of his power and his glory will find expression. Until that happens, God is still being misrepresented. The fullness of who God is will only be understood when his kingdom comes. If the kingdom of God does not show up in his fullness, certain dimensions of God will still remain vague and misunderstood. And that misconception will paint very wrong images about God. Are you following what I'm saying now? So the desire of God is that his kingdom will find expression in the earth. The desire of God is not just to take us to heaven. Please get this. The desire of God is not just for rapture to happen and the antichrist judged. All those things are part of the processes that will lead to the culmination because he is God and his sovereignty will make his prophecy to come to pass. However, he said, Thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. With you I will beat down nations. And so as it is, we do not yet see all things according to Hebrews under his feet. Are you, are you understanding the teaching tonight? So God wants heaven to find expression. Not just as a song. Not just as a cliche. Not just as a Christian suggestion. Not just as a theological fact. He wants it here and now. Here and now. In this place. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. In this place. Here and now. We let your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. So here and now. In this life. 
and with this mortal body he wants the image of the earthly to experience the fortest of the glories and the realities that dwell in heaven but the limitation to that agenda is hidden in this word transformation or lack of it the process by which the earthly becomes the heavenly the process by which the treasure is transferred in earthen vessels the treasure by which a celestial body becomes terrestrial the process by which an ordinary biological being becomes literally a celestial being when that happens then we will bring our lives our families our territories and the nations under the submission of the Christ listen listen what I am telling you is the reason why you are alive right now if nobody has taught you this then I want you to know that you do not even understand what we call Christianity or what we call the faith life it is our participation in bringing this agenda to pass are we following now and there is a way God wants to achieve this I've taught it under the message the emergence you can get part three but I just recap on it before we go to the main discussion tonight I told you that there is a spiritual strategy to which cosmos will be subdued and will come under the governing influence of the king the name of that strategy is the church the church is not the coming together of people not just that the church is not just a local assembly the church is the name of the only spiritual strategy that is capable of birthing the purposes of god in its fullness and so he says thou art peter flesh and blood has not revealed this to you and he says upon this rock i will lift that strategy that ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail so the church is God's only chance and hope. Not because he is not mighty. He has chosen through his predeterminate counsel. That it is only through the church that the multifaceted wisdom of the Christ will find expression. And so the agenda of the, of the father is at the mercy of the understanding and the participation of the church. It's not at the mercy of the might of God. It's not at the mercy of the sovereignty of God. It's at the mercy of the equipping and the participation of the church. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the equipping that they enlighten the saints, that they build up the saints, that they orient the saints, that they they become instruments of birthing transformation in the saints so that the saints now transformed will do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry giving God space to find expression in the earth this is what ministry is all about hallelujah so the spirit of religion is the operation of darkness that masquerades itself as light and rather than exposing the people to the light of God that equips them and prepares them as an army it gives them a form of godliness but the, the capacity the power in it to birth that transformation is not there so for such people their testimony is ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so they learn they have devotionals right there's all kinds of bible studies and prayer monday tuesday wednesday thursday there are church services however those activities have been shrouded in religion and so it does not sustain the ability to break out the light of god in them and so after many years of being in church after many years of being an elder being a deacon being a pastor after many years of a church existing 
that desire of God is unable to find expression because the average believer does not even know why they come to church. They come to church as a way of satisfying guilt. They come to church as a way of, of trying to dance to status quo so that they can avoid the embarrassment of being told they are carnal. But it's much more than that. There is a heart cry. And those who will carry out this heart cry are the ones who become unkillable. They are the ones who the Bible talks about them. It says for them, those people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, don't touch these ones. It is for those kind of people that God would rather a nation die than for something to happen to them. They are the ones who are granted access to taste of the powers of the age to come. Realities that are not apportioned for our dispensation, but on the strength of their yieldedness, they can touch into certain things. This is what happened to David. It was not given to him to see the coronation of Jesus. It was not in his dispensation. But his loyalty and allegiance and alignment opened him up to the mysteries of the spirit and he peeped into the coronation. And he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The prophet Isaiah was not supposed to see the outpouring of the spirit that Joel would prophesy about. But because of his alignment, he tasted of an ability and a dimension that was not made for his dispensation. And he saw in a vision with stammering lips and another tongue, will they praise me? Wherein I have said, this is the rest and the refreshing. It was Joel that began to prophesy. All of these prophets, bits and pieces of their revelation into that ultimate agenda. And here we stand today. The prophesied generation. Here we stand today. The generation that all the prophets have spoken about. While they stood there, they saw you in the loins of prophecy. And here we are. Majorly wasting our time and wallowing in the, in the futility of religion. Unable to partner with the Holy Spirit. To exert any tangible force in the spirit. As far as advancing his agenda is. We are caught up in the web of religion. Pastor, apostle, prophet. Caught up in the religion of meetings and conventions and conferences. Organizing ourselves and organizing God and his agenda out of our program. But Jesus said this. Jesus himself, not a prophet. He said your desire should be to participate in any way to see his kingdom come. Meaning if you are alive today hearing the sound of my voice and there is no active contribution from your life in birthing this agenda, you do not deserve to live. For he said, I shall not die. He didn't say live to roam around wallowing in religion. He said, I shall not die, but live to declare. Is God speaking to us? And so the way he will achieve this agenda is through the church. God wants to do this by revealing himself. Listen. The way that the agenda of God will find expression is when his glory is revealed first in this earthen vessel and then through this earthen vessel to the entire territory of human race. So the agenda is twofold. The manifestation of it. First, to you, the battle acts. He wants you to experience his glory for yourself in your life. That your life becomes an expression of his beauty and glory. That your life becomes a validation to the fact that the kingdom is true. And that the power of God exists. And then out of that experience, you begin to dispense the grace and the glory and the anointing and the power. From your personal testimony as a contribution of your quota to see his kingdom come. Are we learning something? Say after me, God desires that my life will host his presence. God desires that my life, my body, my spirit will host his power. God desires that I become an expression 
of the reality of God's ability here and now. God desires that I become an expression of heaven and everything it carries here and now. That's God's desire for you. God's desire is bigger than giving you a wife. Don't reduce God. God's desire is bigger than giving you a jeep. The devil can give you a jeep. God's desire is bigger than giving you crowds and giving you a church and giving you anointing. God's desire is that the fullness of himself, he wants you to become a conduit of his glory, a conduit of his wisdom. That word, dogza, the full representation of all that is obtainable in him as far as our dispensation is given and defined by he wants it to find expression so the limitation of the agenda of god is the limitation of the ability of the saints to be transformed and not the limitation of his might the inability of the saints to contend for transformation has misrepresented god in the earth this is the tragedy in the earth right now He wants to reveal his wisdom and his glory and his power in your life first and then through your life. Please don't make that mistake to just think he just wants to reveal his glory through you. No, he wants to reveal himself in you, then through you, in you, then through you, in you, then through you. There are two limitations that the Bible reveals to us, two limitations. That can frustrate the church from achieving this there are two limitations that the bible points to us that as much as we say we love god there are two limitations that will stop us from ultimately satisfying the desire of the father number one the first limitation is what the bible calls the gates of hell the gates of hell Matthew 16 verse 18 the gates of hell the first limitation that the Bible openly points out to us that will be a challenge it will be a standard that will attempt to resist this agenda the gates of hell he said and I say unto thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell not demons not principalities the gates the fullness of the arsenal of hell what is the gate of hell it means satan and all the arsenals and the strategies that he has satan and all the arsenals and strategies that he has in an attempt to fight the advancement of the kingdom that's what is called the gate of hell the gate of hell represents satan and all his gimmicks comes from the greek word stratomai it says do not be unaware of the devices that word is stratomai the strategies the skills the arsenals of satan there is a formula he uses for deception there is a formula he uses for witchcraft there is a formula he uses those formulas are like secret codes they are also called mysteries that is the principle with which he has brought nations for instance, the Bible tells us that Satan uses the spirit of fear to put people in captivity. It says, and to deliver them through, through fear, have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. So the spiritual strategy to bring bondage is fear. And like Job, what you fear now becomes your lot. Are you getting me? So the Bible says the gates of hell will rise. You want to get a job, there is a spiritual formula to frustrate you. It is part of the arsenals of the gate of hell. You want to get married, there is a spiritual formula. Because your marriage has a root to bringing this agenda to pass. Since that there is a prophet that your womb should produce. And Satan will fight it. It's not about you coming from east or west. It's about something. When he said the seed, the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent. Satan started looking for everybody that looks like the seed. He's still searching today hallelujah and he will use everything everything he will use everything 
your sensory perceptions, your financial condition, your family situation, your academic condition, every strategy, Satan is desperate, more desperate than you can ever imagine to see that the agenda of God does not come. Let me tell you, those who trivialize the reality of Satan and his plot to fight to death, the agenda of God are joking. Jesus himself said there will only be one limitation to the building of the church, the gates of hell. The spirit of religion came from Satan. Activity without power came from Satan. Because when the nation of Israel in Egypt wanted their exodus, the moment they told Moses we want to go, Moses told um, Pharaoh, what did Pharaoh say? Occupy them. It's because they are free. Start giving them activities. Let them have meetings upon meetings. Seminars upon seminars. And then they get busy and it convinces them that activity is equal to spirituality. Is God speaking to us tonight? Hallelujah. The gates of hell. They will haunt you. I guarantee you. When Jesus went to fast, Satan followed him and stood somewhere watching Jesus praying, listening to his prayer points as he communicated with heaven for 40 days. Satan was nowhere else in the world roaming around. He was waiting because it was a, it was a, 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 a defining moment for Jesus. As soon as Jesus was done, here comes Satan. His strategy again. If you are really the son of God, turn these stones to bread. And he took him up a cliff and so on and so forth. And the Bible says when Jesus overcame him, what did he do? He left him for a season. Is it in your Bible? He left him forever. Make no mistakes that because you think you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil will cross his leg and say, wow, promise. So you are going to have a great ministry in the future. Well done. You are a new creation in Christ. You are joking. You are joking. Hallelujah. the gates of hell they will rise brothers and sisters let me tell you the gates of hell will rise you are a brother you love God the gates of hell will rise through different strategies hallelujah look at Samson the gates of hell rose up he was just moving and one demon entered a lion and the lion came to feed. You think the lion just, he was just strolling around and he said, lion, let's, let's try wrestling. You think that's what was happening to Samson? Because Satan was trying everywhere to find out about his strength. So he used the strongest of the beasts. And a lion came and Samson tore it into pieces. And Satan said, it's not there. Strategy change. He used the Philistines. They caught him. Right? And he, he used the jawbone of an ass. Satan said, I missed it again. Another strategy, Delilah. If I've used physical strength, let me use emotional strength. Where is that beautiful Delilah? And Delilah came. And Satan saw how vulnerable Samson was. He said, we are making progress. We are making progress. He, he, Delilah insisted. And when she cut off his hair, the judge of Israel had been brought to his knees. Hell began to celebrate. The gates of hell prevailing. Samson's eyes were plucked off. Samson's hair was cut off. And I can imagine God saying, come on Samson, you gave it cheap to Delilah. You would have asked me for a wife, I would have given you a wife. And Delilah ran away. But then what they did not know is that there is still a package in God to restore listen God said Samson I know you have blown it your Lord now is dead but you would, you would die in victory let all the people that represent evil in that land gather in one auditorium and the strength will be restored and Samson said oh Lord I know I've sinned against you the, the Lord you have given me for my generation as a judge I allowed a woman sleeping with Delilah that's what some of you are doing as you are looking at me and laughing as if it does not matter. You carry your death. You are insulting Esau for taking porridge. And some of us have done what is cheaper than taking porridge. When you know what is upon your shoulder, you will package yourself and warn yourself from the spirit. 
Samson made Israel to suffer just because the strength and the salvation of Israel was upon him as a judge. But then, you will not say he didn't fulfill his assignment because he pushed. He said, oh God, let me die with them. And while he pushed, the Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Imagine the mass burial of evil. All the evil men gathered together with their idol and he crushed them into pieces and died with them. Every man that showed up was given a piece of this assignment and they ran with it. They didn't do it part time. They spent their life doing it. When Jezebel was threatening the prophets of God, Elijah the Tishbite arose, a fiery prophet who frustrated the counsel of darkness and left. And now, probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s, who knows, one woman was crying in slave trade and said, Oh Lord, I may die, but let this little child of mine exalt your name and that person became your ancestor became your grandfather became your father and now it is you that woman's prayer who died in the slave trade that lord i saw a vision that africa must be saved that's you sitting down roaming around and god is saying do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy how we limit him how we limit him The gates of hell. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Let's hurry up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, but once again, the gates of hell. Satan personally took it as a responsibility. Satan told all the demons, stand. This Paul, I've noticed this guy is, I mean, this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom. I will hinder him by myself. Listen, when you see people being challenged and confronted, shut your mouth. It's because they have, many of you have not received any confrontation. You think it's just because you are in Christ. It's because you have not done anything striking enough. At least start praying. Pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens. That's the night somebody will appear to you and say, let me warn you. Your father obeyed us. Your mother obeyed us. Take care and leave you wake up in the morning and say what happened i'm praying and i'm seeing somebody appear and you think he's backsliding is because fire did something in the spirit the gates of hell let me tell you there are giants in every mountain don't let any man fool you mm. i pity any man of god that wants ministry wants crowd wants miracle and will not pray you are roaming around doing geo or doing president you will die like a chicken i tell you see let me tell you though if you know how desperate satan is to destroy your life satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going that's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of God because for one month now you have not prayed some of you and you have traveled and gone everywhere and yet nothing happened just a guy it's just because I'm in Christ ay, 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 ay. a lady prayed in the night brothers and sisters prayed in the night physically in the morning her uncle called her and said what did you do her physical uncle alive what did you do i can't remember he said be careful you don't know who you are trying let me tell you gates will not open like that 
you want to bring breakthrough you want barrenness to stop in your family you want oppression to stop the cause of poverty to stop all this all this tea christianity will only the devil will encourage you to keep doing it but let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell oh yes i tell you reaction from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of jesus is not there it's a sign that something you are doing is striking a chord how many of you have finished praying and you find out that your loved ones die insulting you and there is fight in the house it's when you finish praying the day you don't pray there's joy and peace and love even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you but you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop as you step out they say look i've been warning you and you are saying what did i do it's not the person the gates of hell attempting to stop you you tell that man no i won't sleep with you i'm going somewhere and see what happens that's the day somebody will come and tell you we don't do it like this in Nigeria better bend or become a fool and you sit down and say truly Satan is threatened by every communication of zeal towards your destiny I know what cares Satan I found out early in life the moment you say I am taking a step I tell you Satan fears you it's not everybody Satan is afraid of. There are men who have determined when you worship God and you say, Lord, in life and in death, Satan says, what do I do with this person? Whether you pray or not, things are working well. I guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you. A day will come, God will wake and say, Mr. Man, there are still other sinners getting born again. Your tenure of, of cheap playing Christianity has been expired. I said, it doesn't really matter. Oh God, I thank you. I love you. You're my king. You died. You've done everything. You will, you will waste like a chicken. Especially, take what I'm saying serious. I'm not playing games. There is the gate of hell. It will meet you on the road to your job. It will meet you when you're about to give birth. One of our ladies just put to bed. Annie worshipped him. Bouncing baby boy. Hallelujah. At a point they were talking stories here and there. And she said she had a dream. And she saw me. I thank God for using my face as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit. No, I say it with, with all you. If you see me in your dream. Before this, hear what I'm saying. Before you carry newspaper around and say... You are, you are programming all of that let me tell you some of you are not serious with your destiny even you you know you are not serious that's why the gate of hell will pass you you say what of me they say no 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 you are not an issue there is somebody we are looking for listen may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you you would think it's spiritual growth but it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit. You are not striking any chord. When the devil wants to destroy your parents, he comes freely. No resistance whatsoever. You snow in demons, come in, do what they do, and, they, and they, they come out and you wake up. I refuse my life to be like that. For as long as I am alive, the devil will know that I love the Lord and I will stake my life to see his kingdom come are you getting what I'm saying do you know there are some of you is the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family make no mistakes about it they are criticizing you and you don't know why it's a reaction don't stop that's the time to stay after they do all of that you find a corner you know how kings reign come on you know how they reign don't stand outside behaving like a fool you lock yourself fire is rising everywhere in the spirit and the gates of hell are saying here he comes again may they know your name he said Jesus I know Paul I know Joshua Selman I know they will know you and know your tongues once they hear it they say here he comes shekete katababa manta protokaya tongues that have grown with pain tongues that have grown with sacrifice the gates of hell
will fight anything they can fight in your life. Please be aware of it. You may be as beautiful as the sun. You will watch men pass you like this. That's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes. Hallelujah. One day in my life, fridge fell on my head. The devil wanted to destroy my life. Yet, by the mercy of God, I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games. That's why, if listen, when the devil was doing that, he saw the word I'm giving you. It, it's not just because of Joshua Selma. When they looked at the womb of her that was with child, they said they saw two nations, not two people. There are some of you, the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you is what you represent. Backslide and see how the devil just leaves you. And upon this rock, I will build my church. If you travel up and down and come back safe, it's not luck. There is a law of life. If you don't know it, you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life. Tomorrow we are going to a bomber show. Praise the Lord. To go and invade and set fire. is fire all the way, brothers and sisters. Mm. So break every chain. Break every chain. May your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory. That when you show up, come on. Man, they cut alabakaya. Look, there are some of you. The reason why God will insist that you marry somebody is because He's taking Himself to that family. He packaged Himself to you and He's saying, Go there. And you enter that family and you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say, For introduction, welcome note. Manta Pratosketa Emprotoskete Kelepata Zeketele Kotopa Lift up your heads All ye gates That's introduction But why has your life Not passed this kind of threat To the gates of hell Hallelujah Moses threatened the devil when he died, Satan took his body, his dead body. They were fighting over his dead body. Satan said, he's dead. I still want it. Because if he resurrects, i I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens. The dead body of a man. Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life. But the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already seeing you are not blind behold man takatayabada I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy, the word power there is the word exousia authority I give it to you Joshua Selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria. Don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because Satan was asleep. There is a force. We know where we do it. When the prayer band comes together on Tuesday, as they lift their voice, something is happening. And while you are there in your room, some chains just break. And you say, let me go for Koinonia today. And something wants to keep you. But God will say, come, come, come. Listen. Please let me submit to you in all sincerity. If your prayer life is dead, use this meeting to jack it back to life. I'm not playing games. This is not an issue of I'm calling to the ministry of prayer. Nobody's calling to any ministry of prayer. 
I say everybody is called into the ministry that will make Jesus come. The advancement of the kingdom. He didn't tell some, let me teach you how to pray. The rest go fishing. He was talking to everybody. You see the importance of prayer. If you are not told this, let me tell you. What I'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication. If I don't give you a reason to pray, you will never pray. All these lazy things people do around. And let me tell you something. A big secret. See, explore the mystery of night prayers. We'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that. The mystery of night prayers. When all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshiping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of Jesus remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night you carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level. You carry your Bible. You carry your recorder. This is what I do. This is what I do. I put heavy worship for hours. And while that is happening, I'm lying down flat with notebooks. Oh Lord, this land is opening up. God said, don't go anywhere. Stay in one place. Say, thank you Jesus for saving me. I would have made a fool out of myself. And God says, I want to do more, son. You are limiting me. You are limiting me. Expand your capacity. Thank God for what you have seen in Koinonia, but it's only little. And I say, Lord, supply the grace. And that heavy Shekinah comes. Shekatatata. I lie down there. I sleep and I wake up. I sleep and I wake up. The body is tired. I say, sleep there. You are not going anywhere. Not what you do on your bed. You lie down and then you put the earphone and you sleep off. That is, is a basic level of spiritual growth. It's spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you'll get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the great will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that will open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means. It's a double confirmation. So in case anything happens and I didn't pray, Satan will still not use it as a yardstick because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life. By any means. Whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness, that scripture still fortifies me while God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power, that's what you see. If you believe the by any means part, that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God walking. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on. You know I will talk to you. Right? Or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means. Keeping you. I want you to realize that you truly have authority now whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this it's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it are you getting me whether or not you refuse it it does not mean i did not give you he said i give you authority let's hurry up the second limitation that the bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind. I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray. 
the first limitation is the gates of hell satan but the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind the absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of god finding expression now let me explain something very quickly i want to just correct something very very quickly please look up i taught something and we're having a school of ministry and i did a little teaching and i saw the way the students the thing was just nailing them and uh God, they were saying it's not like i don't agree with you but let it just settle down what we call the tripartite nature of man i want to teach you something please look up people have written books who have never had any encounter with god and have written all kinds of audacious books let me have three people i want to correct something now please hallelujah watch this just stand face you stand in the middle you are wearing white god bless you watch this look at this this is what you have been taught now i'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man but i want to teach you something that will really liberate you otherwise you will not understand this transformation thing i'm talking about what i'm going to teach is very powerful now this is what we have taught people this is man number one spirit this is man same man number two soul is that not true this is man number three body this is what you have taught the bible never teaches this one this is nonsense that's religion that brought up that <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying it is true that man is a tripartite being but the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals like father son and holy spirit uh -uh. it's in the similitude of that but watch this this is the part i want to explain to you what is the soul of man look up if you don't understand this forget transformation forget carrying the power of god and the glory of god what exactly is the soul of man it is true that the bible says that you'll be kept spirit soul and body right but what is the soul of man is what i'm saying is can you separate the spirit of man to say this is spirit you this is soul stand here this is body can that happen look at me when a man dies how many objects or entities are separate two is that not true whatever you call it whether spirit or soul we're about to find out but whatever let's call it x x comes out and the body is lying down there correct is that true we're about to get the name of x now listen <laughs> he said why no one say why there's no why in the equation are you are you following what i'm saying now if you don't understand this you will be confused which part relates to god which part should change which part goes to heaven and there is that's to tell you believers are not even growing because if you are growing you must meet this question on the way are you getting what i'm saying what is the soul look up we teach that man is a spirit he has a soul he lives in a body very correct it's only that we don't think over what we are saying joshua selman listen joshua selman is a person he has a handkerchief he lives in a room how many assuming this room is a living thing how many living things do we have are you getting what i'm saying now what you call the soul please get this never forget what i'm about to teach you now what you call the soul listen is the spirit of man but connected to his will emotions and intellect the will emotion and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body are you getting what i'm saying so when the bible says man is a spirit it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from god right but the spirit like that if the spirit just comes to the body there will still not be interaction because of law of territory go and get my message mysteries of the kingdom i've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territories that's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth they need material bodies is that true because of the law of territory so the spirit as it were 
is unable to find expression physical in the body until a dividing line are you getting what i'm saying now an attachment that helps the spirit to communicate with this container called the body and that attachment is the mind composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul you are right when you say man is a spirit you are right but i'm telling you the dynamics of the difference because when you get born again this guy watch this when you get born again in in his original sense your spirit man is united with christ it experiences the fullness of salvation immediately immediately oneness so way are you getting my point the so way life implanted here but that so way life has not found expression in this body that so way life has not permeated these faculties that was given to you that is why although you are born again you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke the memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line the will emotion and intellect has not been transformed are you getting what i'm saying so the bible puts it this way first peter chapter 1 verse 9 first peter chapter 1 verse 9 you need to understand this herbalists understand this those who do astral travel right what they call them Harry Krishna or all this world relief they understand this very well it's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught everybody read want to read the word end there is the culmination of your faith receiving the culmination of your faith what is it this is talking to believers what is the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul is when your will your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit the degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with god are you understanding what i'm saying so watch this all authority has been given so we believe the word of god that means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of jesus that means that if the mind of christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially nothing will be impossible for you again because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned are you getting what i'm saying are we following what i'm saying but this is usually the problem watch this all power is here the body is a puppet is ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to are you getting what i'm saying now this is all the power of god but this is the level of access so that power can barely find expression to the body so all that the body executes are you getting what i'm saying is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident there but because human beings look at the body and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read oh sick bodies you can be healed blind you will be healed and your spirit man is saying yes we have the power don't fear but because you do not have that vision of your soul the transformation what makes the earthly heavenly are you getting my message now that very factor i now come to him on wheelchair is it true that all authority has been given yes and i say stand up and he can't stand up he sits back down i say look ginger your faith let's try it again watch this stand up and nothing happens and at the end of it this guy says your jesus is a liar what happened he was misrepresented 
you just misrepresented Jesus Christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves. Do you agree with me? Now I am telling you that God is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation. As mighty as he is on the throne, he is at the mercy. Give me space. And then while you are struggling, a man like Benny Hinn comes and he just stands and says, Holy if you are on a wheelchair, stand up, stand up. And he stands up and he's walking. What happened? More Jesus than you? No. No. There is a greater conformity to the image of the Christ that has made him, his body, now responds in greater measure. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again. Your job is to bring that mind that contains your will, emotion, and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul. Right? So when we say salvation of the soul, you're not really doing anything per se, although we generally say spirit man. Are you getting my point? But what we really mean, I'm breaking the dynamics for you, is that attachment to your spirit man called your will, emotion, and intellect. That is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of God find expression. Because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. Your spirit man has been joined to Christ. Except you don't believe the Bible. But that Christ cannot show up on the scene. Because your mind is a limitation. So I come as a preacher. And I say in the name of Jesus. Darkness flee. And although the spirit is willing. But the flesh becomes weak. Because the doorway through which the possibilities of God through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak. So I look at somebody oppressed and I say in the name of Jesus Christ, be free and nothing happens. When nothing happens over a long time, the devil now comes and says, why don't you try me? You have tried the rest. Jesus being part of the rest. And you say, truly, let's go to the village. We have tried, man of God, I appreciate you. I know God is using you mightily, but the emergency requires another force to come into attention. And the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties. See, this is the same thing that happens when demons come. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me teach you something now, watch this. A man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the Holy Spirit seeks to attach himself. That's called demon possession. Are you getting me? The will is helplessly at the mercy of that. So the man can carry out anything. This man can be born again. Demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se. But they use the doorways of these faculties. So between the spirit and the body, there is an interruption. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So he can be born again, yet anger is still killing him. He can be a man of God, yet he's still masturbating and he's praying in tongues. Genuine tongues, real tongues. And you are saying, Kai, this man of God is fake. No, he's not fake. Something is happening in the soul realm. The salvation of his soul has not been perfected. So the Bible says it this way. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh, but mighty through God. Are you seeing now? He shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ listen so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to enoch enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime this his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality you see the concept of immortality that many preachers people like kobus great man i love and honor he's gone to be with the lord he caught the revelation of immortality but not the dynamics of its manifestation so he knew from the word of God that if immortality is at work in your life, the first thing that happens is you stop aging. At once, 
you stop aging. That's a sign that immortality is at work. But it so happens that immortality is not an impartation. The fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body lies. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body. That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Bless you guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let's rush. Help us Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One. Who are the day? Mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh Israel, I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministries? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen. I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life. I've never seen it before. Never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I knew to do. And one day, there was a lady who came from somewhere. And I prayed, you know, we bought food for her. And then she, I prayed for her. She got born again. And I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just by faith. And I just laid my hands. And it was as if I was dreaming. I just saw somebody moving back. I had barely touched her. And that's how she just went on the floor. Ah! I said, oh God, what, what is this good news that I'm seeing? So be excited when you begin to see. Don't just be childish about it. That's, because some of you, once you see that, you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small. So that the anointing will enter fast. You now go and look for small, small ladies and try to throw them. I remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of god will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you not fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of god is bigger than that thing god will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him so just do and let's continue but it doesn't mean god you are slowing down your progress some of you are doing it abby praise the lord and so from that time i began to see i will never forget when i saw one dimension of the operation of the holy spirit in my life i think it was our first crusade punching crusade we usually have pastors conference where we have some time with the pastors teach them that was in 2006 and then we we'll have like um we we'll just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them so i was in a church and i gave a word of knowledge when i gave a word of knowledge the person literally stood up by the anointing you know this running that people run out and come Brrr, i was shocked i thought that's how they do it in the church i called another person and he ran out i could not understand i didn't know that gradually 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 hallelujah let me use medical terms have you seen times when medical people a woman wants to give birth right and they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough is that true is there a baby yes does he want to come out yes why is he not coming out the mother right and sometimes they have to do all kinds of things worse come to worse when nothing is wrong they just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out pray that god will not have to do cs for you for this destiny to come out by force i 
as soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the Spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more. So, the transformation that has, our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the Word of God. So, more of heaven can find expression to our lives. But compared to where God wants to take, we are still so slow. This is why we must continue contending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we celebrate men of God. We don't just celebrate the men. We celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake. Not just shake in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketu. She's still alive till today. When that woman is coming for a crusade, immediately they spot her car. That's how healings and deliverance happen. I was shocked. I didn't know there's such a person in the earth. Ah! The day I saw that, I said, my goodness. Ah, this is heaven. This is what we're saying. This woman stepped into the crusade ground. And my goodness, the kind of miracles. I'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not. You are just afraid of the pastor. So you say yes. Provable miracle. Wounds that will close right away. Not magic. Right away. Wounds closing. I said, my goodness, oh God. So you still have men and women. And ladies, do you know you have an advantage over men? Because of your configuration. Your configuration was designed in the similitude of the Holy Spirit. You see that? That's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized. Because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. A transformed mind. I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come on. And has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion and intellect that has come into agreement. You no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one, transformation is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part it says, walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Work it out. The work out there. It says. Wherefore my beloved. As ye have always obeyed. Not in my presence only. But now much more in my absence. Comma. Work out your what? Your own salvation. As a matter of urgency. What is the work there? Is the name given to your participation. Your cooperation with the Holy Spirit. In your fasting. You are working it out. I will be sharing with us. In your prayer. And all the points I am about to give you here. You are working it out. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. The Bible gives it an interesting picture. It says put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Where it is like a cloth. Put on. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And what? 
by so doing make no provision for the flesh that means there will be space for the flesh until you put on that put on the transformation is like wearing a new garment Your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God. Hallelujah. You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit? Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life that means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life not how much you carry but how much will find expression so you can carry God as we all believe but you never see that God show up in your life in my life Lord, be glorified. Will you be glorified in my life? Lord, be glorified today. Can you sing that song? Lord, in my life, he my life be glorified be glorified in my life hallelujah so what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church, man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God, there is so much God can do in you. But your disalignment has made him look small. I have made you too small in my mind. Ah, how true. Oh Lord, we really should cry for forgiveness. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie. That you were unable to help me. But today, right in this place. But now, oh Lord. I see my wrong Heal my heart And show yourself strong Show yourself in my life And in my heart And with my song Oh Lord Be my Oh that's the song you must sing That's the song of transformation Be magnified Break the walls Break the boundaries Be magnified Oh Lord Be magnified Oh Lord You are highly exalted And there is nothing You can't do Hey, oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. St. Patrick's 
a great man that lived a man had died brothers and sisters six months he was dead and saint patrick's came and said where is the grave true story when they showed the grave he signed his signature on it saint patrick he said dig it they brought the man out alive in this earth men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods i shared with you about ancient i study a lot about revivals i was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway there was no money to buy another one he held it and drew it and completed it Hi. transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly Catherine Kuhlman she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating she didn't realize she had left the stage Apostle Babalola for those of you who know the founder of CAC that man preached to a point he was levitating and going they held him and brought him back E.W. Kenyon men who allowed the possibilities of God you don't die less than 70 in his church he will raise you back to life one time a man had a, a, an accident a car climbed his legs broke his bones and all ew kenyon did was to look at him because he sees through his eyes and he looked at him allowing heaven to pass through your eyes and the bones started making noise we say it today like mystics but men the bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of how did they live imagine brothers and sisters elijah he was talking with god on the mountain and they came to interrupt him he called fire your atmosphere opened fire we came consumed them and they went back physically daniel entered the lion's den and looked at the lions and smiled joshua told the son to stand still there is something we are missing in our generation and Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind. Imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space. And see the little things that trickles of his presence. That happen during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish i wish that's the reason why god transports men from region to region he's transporting himself through them tomorrow we are going to obama shop and god is going there through the decree we have given him he expects to do great things but he wants to do more unfortunately joshua selman has refused to be as yielded as god wants so probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die but i may not be able to raise him and I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering and say, you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You'll be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul, took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came yeah paul this is how you have done just shook himself the guys please i will talk to you later on paul said i am in the straight between i'm standing the line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm that's where i am i'm choosing to go or to stay but i'll stay because it's profitable for you can you imagine a man like that john his mind was so aligned they threw him in boiling pot and nothing happened but today when they shoot you you will die at once let me finish up so we'll pray so what then is your assignment what's your challenge write these two scriptures philippians 2 12 and philippians 2 5 that's your assignment let this mind be in you permit this mind 2 verse 5 
let this mind koinonia god wants to find expression in zaria god wants to find expression in your family give him space don't limit the mighty one he is mighty but limited mighty but limited mighty but limited through you what is your challenge write it that means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth that's your singular challenge that's your singular task contend for transformation give God space through your life my goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me that there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously i look forward to a time when there will be accidents and i will just come and god will say thank you i've always wanted to raise them but i need an access point joshua selman be there hey see the bible says you shall lay hands on the sick it didn't say you shall say be healed just take me near that person and he will be healed god wants to go to your home but he wants to travel through you transformation the hallmark of transformation is oneness with god unity the hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of christ your mind becomes a full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of god are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of christ give him space give him space very quickly before we pray the process of transformation what is the dynamic so how are you changed what's what what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly number one the first key to transformation is a life of prayer the first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly praying in the spirit when you pray in the spirit that transformation is happening whether you know it or not that's why i encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life pray in the night pray in the day separate days for prayers prayer in the spirit is one of god's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly is one of the system through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself prayer is like molting the way reptiles snakes molt you, see, you know what happens when they want to expand right they come out of their current shell it's a difficult process it's a sacrifice because snakes don't have hands and they have to crawl through and when they come out you now see the cocoon and the snake is big before it now crystallizes that's how you grow so while you are praying investments of prayer one hour two hours three hours sometimes you just dedicate the time morning till night worship and you just pray with fastings of course periodically not every time and something is happening to you all of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more you wouldn't know until you go for one meeting and while you are standing you are seeing people shouting everywhere and you are seeing the power of god moving and you are surprised what has happened to me space 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 you've given him space prayer is principally a channel for encounter illumination and empowerment not just petition 
petition is the last aspect of prayer the primary purpose of prayer is for encounters for illumination first corinthians let me give you a few scriptures quickly first corinthians chapter 14 i won't explain just write it chapter 2 verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god right he speaks mysteries and then verse 4 first corinthians 14 says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies builds up enlarges his spiritual capacity number two romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27 the bible says for we know not what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit he makes intercession for us he searches the mind of god right he brings an intermingling it's like a salt covenant he says let us reason together it happens in the place of prayer romans 8 26 and 27 and then jeremiah 33 verse 3 prayer grants you access to light and illumination call on to me and i will answer and show thee great and mighty things not small and meager things great and mighty things let me tell you look at me there is no amount of bible study that will substitute for prayer do you know why many people are not really getting revelation because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer you can study but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you make no mistakes about it you can sit down and study forever get up and carry the letter that kills go and teach and not bless people but true illumination is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type i have commanded and if you do that your light will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily james chapter 5 verse 16 the fervent not joking and trivial prayer the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much amplified says is dynamic in its working so when you pray when you pray in the spirit you are enlarging your capacity you see why we pray you see why we believe in the ministry of prayer it's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast we are not trying to add to what Jesus has done we are opening up to receive all that he has brought number two the second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word so here we have the ministry of prayer and then insight and revelation from the word notice i didn't just say the word of god it's for a reason because if i say the word of god many of us have been reading bible but the insight and the revelation the illumination you get from the word of god and then in addition to that our obedience to the word of god is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us listen listen the word of god is like a bag that carries treasures your obedience to the principles of the word opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside you know how granite is it's in a shell that's principally how the word of god is when you act your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you so it's not enough to just get insight and revelation you must be willing to obey to the latter i wrote something here that is interesting revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion revelation when you have revelation insight in the bible and you do not have the willingness to obey it you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion A few scriptures mm. proverbs 24 verse 30 let's look at it very quickly 
we'll look at three scriptures proverbs 24 verse 30 and then acts chapter 8 29 to 30 proverbs 24 verse 30 hallelujah it says 24 verse what 30 i think i may have made a mistake okay let's go to acts 8 verse 29 to 30 while i look that up acts 8 it was a story the story of the utopian enoch watch this that guy could not experience god in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding and when the spirit said unto philip go near and join yourself to the chariot 30 And Philip ran Peter to him and had him read prophet Isaiah and said, What? Understandest what thou readest? Not just that you are reading it, do you understand? It's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures. Do you understand? Understanding, illumination, insight. Job chapter 22, verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth The last scripture, John chapter 1 verse 12. This is the one that blew my mind. The Bible says, As many as received him. Who is the him? The word. But as many, not everybody will receive the word. Many will read the word. Many will admire the word. But very few will receive it. He said, but as many as received that word. That word gives them power to become. Power to become power to become when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly number three the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship a life of intense worship intense worship bible says do not be drunk with wine wearing in excess he said but ye be filled with the holy ghost speaking to yourself in psalms hymns spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the lord let me tell you something about worship i've studied it very well worship brings the manifest presence of god to your life and your territory worship is a magnet there are three levels of god's presence there is his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time there is what i call his emmanuel dimension that when two people are gathered in a place he's there in their midst God with us but there is his Shekinah his manifested presence that dimension is invoked in worship second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14 let's hurry up second Chronicles 5 12 to 14 second Chronicles 5 it says and also the Levites which were singers all of them of Asaph of Haman of Jedutun with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen having cymbals and pastries and psalms stood at the east end of the altar and with them a hundred and twenty priests worshipping and sounding trumpets next verse and it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for the Lord is good for his mercy endured forever that what happened 
the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord next verse the Shekinah of God came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud he said for the glory of the Lord had filled the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of God comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerful in the anointing and the glory of God that the cloud the glory of the Lord let me tell you when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life you won't even be able to stand up that Shekinah sicknesses will melt away infirmities will go away the majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you maintain a life of worship put worship songs in your phones remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities come and meet the worship team let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you just lie down in your room you may be sleeping normally but let the songs just play sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing no words to them and you are just soaking and after a while the shekinah of god like a hand resting upon eggs remember what i said about the hand a hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek how much more the glory of god when it rests upon you hallelujah acts chapter 16 verse 25 the bible tells us that paul and silas were locked up in the prison and the bible says they prayed and they sang they sang praises to god and the prisoners had them he had them oh my god that's why we worship a lot in koinonia it's the secret of the presence it's a secret look at every man that walks in the anointing every man that walks in the miraculous Benny Hinn will worship for hours Dr. Paul Enche would worship for hours men who know God men who carry the anointing Catherine Kuhlman all these great people they would sing hymns and worship for hours and when the presence rests wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves your job is to get God to the scene and step out our worship team all of them have been trained to understand the assignment of koinonia worship team is not to entertain koinonia the very assignment of koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of god finds expression that's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are good and your mercy forever. Hallelujah. Let's sing it one more time. try to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we're going to pray we're out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but I want you to pray with all your heart I like you to pray and ask the Lord and say Lord bring me to
to that place where the mind of Christ experientially becomes my mind I'm willing to give you space go ahead and pray I'm willing to give the God of miracles space the God of breakthroughs the God of signs and wonders the God of impartations the God of salvation and revival Pray, man of God. Pray, woman of God. Pray, businessman. Give God space. Hallelujah. Pay yourselves into two, please. You are going to pray. I like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. Pray. Let heaven invade his mindset. Let heaven invade his ministry. Let heaven invade his business. Let heaven invade his marriage. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Heaven, heaven, invade our minds, invade our souls, invade our souls, invade our bodies. Let the fullness of the capacity the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression hallelujah hallelujah look up you're going to pray for yourself and say Lord in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life. After the order of Benny Hinn, after the order of Catherine Kuman, that prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul. After the order of Smith Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick, my territory will experience revival, revival, fire, 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 revival, fire, healing, fire. No playing games, no playing games with destiny. No playing games. Shake it, 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 it. The sick must be healed through my life. The oppressed must be delivered. Sinners must be saved. Sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life. I give you space. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first, the gates of hell. The solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it. The second is the limitation that your mind gives you. The solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word we are going to pray
there are forces that have vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space there are all kinds of forces but I like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones you love them some of them don't know what you know lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes please permit me to raise one more prayer point i know we're out of time but this is burning in my spirit look up hallelujah god is doing things fire is burning in this place listen bishop oyedeko said there was a time the church in kaduna was not growing nothing was happening they had the heart they had the mandate but they were spiritual walls and they were fasting together with the pastors lord what is it and the lord told him come out and he came out and he said look and he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud he said this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry there are people who are genuine but the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest and challenge gates challenge gates Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Forces of ancestry. Forces of darkness. Lift up your heads. Forces of delay. Lift up your single head. Forces of stagnation. Lift up your heads. Heads, forces of lukewarmness in the name of Jesus lift up your hands pray begin to command decree command decree command release my marriage release my job release my academics release my destiny release my ministry release my mantle release my anointing release my destiny help us release my unction shokote skata mapate koprotokete ekatatata ekete saros marekete sekete we set fire, fire on altars of darkness. We set fire on yokes. We set fire on devils. We command by the fire of the world, by the fire of the blood, by the fire of the spirit. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey,
Alléluia. Alléluia. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those chains will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gates, then they will open. When you confront the gates that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gates stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gates killing your academics, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited him. And the spirit cries. The spirit cries. If any man will give me space. He said go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container, the oil will increase. Shut up. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness that has authorized Satan to make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight with strength from above. In the name of Jesus, every zeal and fire for God that has died for whatever reason, may it jump back to life today. Hallelujah. Now quickly keep standing everybody. Our time is fast spent, but there are people inside and outside the Lord brought you. And you know that you have not made your ways right with the Lord. You love God. But you know you are tired. You are saying, man of God, I'm tired of the way my life is. And I'm crying for help. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Or you gave your life to Christ. But for some reasons, you found yourself moving in one way or the other. Please make your way inside and outside. We have one minute for this. I'd like you to rush out and come before God. Come. This is the place of empowerment. Welcome home. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody. I know there are many people outside. Make your way inside. Run to Jesus. The place of empowerment. The encounter that will change your story. Please take God seriously tonight. Don't play games with your destiny. Jesus wants to invade your life. Hallelujah. Keep coming. For those who are here, listen. I salute you and I congratulate you. There is no room for lukewarmness in this Christian race. And let me tell you, no matter where you are, don't feel guilty. You can take off from there. God is willing to reach down to you and start with you. Everybody started from somewhere. Therefore, I want you to lift your right hand. Please, you are not reciting a point. I want this to be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I've heard your word and I mean business with you from this night. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.